This video is about the complex plane. So the first thing that we'll do is just go over the problems on the warm up. So from honors algebra 2 trig, we multiplied and divided complex numbers. When you multiply complex numbers, you just use the distributive property. So you would end up with, um, let's actually distribute correctly. So you would multiply those four things together. You end up with negative 4 plus 4i plus 4 root 3i minus 4 root 3i squared. Remember that i squared is negative 1, so this ends up being negative 4 plus 4 root 3. And then let's combine the two i terms to 4 plus 4 root 3i. So basically just factoring i out of these two terms. We can also divide complex numbers. Now we would get something that looks like this. Remember that we don't allow imaginary numbers in the denominator. So we multiply by the conjugate of the top and bottom. Then we would use the distributive property. The distributive property on the bottom has the added benefit of eliminating the middle two terms. So we just end up with 16 times negative 16 i squared, or 16 plus 16. Then the numerator, we use the distributive property. Again, we end up with these numbers. Remember, i squared is negative 1. So we end up with this. And notice in this particular problem, all of these values are divisible by 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, and 32. So we can rewrite it like this. Or if we wanted to, we could separate them into their parts. So negative 1 eighth minus root 3 eighths, and then plus negative 1 eighth plus root 3 eighths. I. So we can write it like that also. Now a couple quick reminders. A rectangular point is x comma y and a polar point is r comma theta. Complex numbers are just another way of writing points on a plane. So we can write complex numbers in the form x plus yi. I. So essentially what happens is you just take this point and rewrite it in complex form. So basically what that's saying is that from the warm-up, I could take w and write this complex number as the point 4, negative 4. I could take z and write that as the point negative 1, square root of 3. So you basically just take the, the real part, write that as the x, and the complex part, and write that as the y. You could also do the same thing in polar form. Remember that x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So we could write the complex number in polar form, r parentheses cosine theta plus i sine theta. Example 1, plot this point in the complex plane. So that's just plotting the point root 3, negative 1, which is over here. Then the rectangular position, we write root 3, negative 1. The polar form of the point, well, you use x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So if I want to find those things, root 3 squared plus negative 1 squared is 3 plus 1, which is 4. So the radius is 2. And then you could use the arctan to find the angle. Or you could just realize that this point is something that we should have memorized. And so that's a pi sixth reference angle in the fourth quadrant. Then you can rewrite this in polar form using r and theta. So we just use polar form to rewrite it. So it's 2 cosine 
11 pi 6 plus 2 sine 11 pi 6 i, or you can write it this way with the 2 on the outside. So we have cosine 11 pi 6 plus i sine of 11 pi 6 All right, example two. Plot this point in the complex plane and write all of the other forms. So this is just a radius of two and at the angle 30, so that would be over here, the complex form of the point is going to be root three plus one i. The polar form of the point is going to be um, 2 comma 30 degrees or 2 comma pi sixths. The rectangular position of the point would be root 3 comma 1. So these are all things just using these forms up here. The polar form of complex numbers gives an easier way to find the product and the quotient. Remember how much work all of this was with distributing and then finding the uh, the conjugate and doing all of this work over here and multiplying by the conjugate on the top and bottom, multiplying by that fancy form of one, the fufu. Um, <clears throat> well, now what we have is if we have two complex numbers, all we have to do is multiply or divide the radii and then add or subtract the angles. Now the question is, why does that work? Well, we're going to see the next slide. We'll just do a little bit of uh, stuff, I guess. So we multiply z1 and z2. So we just write it all multiplied together. Then, of course, the same thing we've been doing in a lot of things is we'll do the distributive property. When we do the distributive property, we end up with cosine one, cosine or cosine theta one, cosine theta two, plus i sine theta one, cosine theta two, i sine theta two, cosine theta one, and then i squared sine theta one, sine theta two. So we just do the distributive property. Now I've grouped these things into the things that have i's and the things that won't have i's, because remember i squared is negative one. So then I've rewritten them as the red parts over here and the blue parts over here. So the red parts are real, the blue parts are imaginary. And then notice that this is just the cosine coalition, and this is separate signs with the same sign. So I can rewrite this as the cosine coalition changes the sign, so cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2, and this is sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. So there's an i here. So it's r1, r2, cosine theta 1 plus theta 2, plus i sine theta 1 plus theta 2. So that's why this formula works. And I could do the exact same thing with the dividing, but you're just going to have to take my word for it, or this video will get really long. So basically what we have is we have a lot of usefulness out of this, because if I have this example, if I'm multiplying ZW, all I have to do is multiply 3 and 5, and I get 15. And then all I have to do is add 30 and 90. So I get 15 times cosine 120 plus I sine 120. And then that's pretty easy to graph. That's up here. So it's a distance of 15 from the radius, and then it's 120 degrees, or 2 pi thirds. Now if I want, I can just use cosine 120, which is negative 1 half, and I can rewrite this in its complex form, not the polar part, but I can do the regular complex form. And so then I have these two points, and what I'm trying to show you is that if you add this angle to this angle, you would get this angle, 30 plus 90 equals 120, and it makes sense when you multiply that 3 times 5 would get you 15. So that's essentially how you do it. 
z divided by w, it's 3 fifths, and then you subtract the angle, so you get negative 60 degrees, or you could write it as 300 degrees if you want. You can write it in its regular complex form, and here's another picture that shows you what it looks like. So 30 minus 90 gets you negative 60, which puts you down there, and it makes sense that 3 divided by 5 gets you 3 fifths. And so notice that 3 tenths comma negative 3 root 3 over 10. If you did the Pythagorean theorem on that, you would get a radius of 3 fifths. Example 4. Now we're going to do a couple in radian form. So if I add these angles, and multiply, I get z1 times z2 is 50 and then cosine of 5 pi thirds and I sine 5 pi thirds and then I rewrote it in its regular complex form. If I divide, 5 divided by 10 is 1 half then subtract the angles you get negative pi. So then you can just rewrite this in regular complex form which is negative 1 half. Now how do I know that? Because cosine of pi is negative 1, sine of pi or negative pi is 0 and as a result, that means the imaginary part goes away. And now back to the warm-up. Remember how difficult these problems were. I ended up getting some nasty looking answers. Well, I can rewrite these in their polar form. And if I rewrite them in their polar form, it actually ends up not being too bad. So if you multiply z times w, it's just 2 times 4 root 2, which is 8 root 2. Then you add the angles, you get 435. And if you want to put it in uh, 0 to 360, you get 75 degrees. So you can actually graph it pretty quick. Circle of radius 8 root 2 and 75 degrees. So that would be right about here. Now I'm just putting the picture on here because this one was an angle of 120. This one is an angle of 315. So if I add those together, I get an angle of 435, which is all the way around, and then here, which is the same as a 75 degree angle. And this is 8 root 2 away from the radius. Finally, I just rewrote z and w so you can see it without me having to scroll up a bunch. If I divide them, I guess I probably should have brought these down here. Oh, I can't. <laughs> but these are z and w. So if I do 2 divided by 4 root 2, I get 1 over 2 root 2, which is the same thing as root 2 over 4. And then if I add the angles, or I'm sorry, subtract the angles, so I get negative 195, which is positive 165 degrees. And here's the same thing with the picture. Notice that you end up, when you divide, getting a pretty small length away from the radius. And you end up with the same, well, I guess I can't click on that. It won't let me. But you end up with the same point that you got from the original warm-up problem.